Good morning, good morning. God bless you and God keep you. Oh Lord, I said I'm going to try to start doing these early in the morning. This one won't be a visual until I get dressed. I got to get dressed for this job, which I started, by the way. Um, what was it? Started yesterday. Well, I started Wednesday. Yeah, today's Friday. I started Wednesday. So, I hope you can hear me. Uh, uh, I was doing two days of training. Let me preface this with, I was ready to give up. Every time I'm trying to do something, so it's, every time I look around, I'm getting tickets, something bad happening. You know what I'm saying? And I was at the point, you know, this happened, that happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm just ready to give up. This job I don't really like. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I got fired from another job. I turned around, I got another job. So, you know, it is what it is. So, got to work. Got to eat. Got to work. Got to pay bills. So, that being said, Okay. Had the two days of training. All of a sudden, they decided to throw us out on the floor. Really, a day and a half of training. Which, we just, we didn't get trained on the machines, whatever. But I worked in warehousing factories all my life. So anyway, this is not what I wanted to do. But anyway, the good thing is it's closer, you know. And I know where it is, so and then I have daytime, so let me not complain. Thank God for that, because I counted my blessings yesterday. You know, turned around, this chick went back in my bank account, took some money out. Really, another retaliation thing. I'm trying to save money. She's going to go back in and take my money, but... Oh, what, in verse James, it said, count it out joy when strife and all this type of bad things come against you. It's a purifying of your faith. Lord Jesus Christ, I ain't letting master be super strong. So anyway, I'm working this job, so they put us on the line. So now I'm working with some Cubans or Mexicans. I hope it don't sound racist, but I'm just going to tell you. I'm just telling you what it's my, what happened. So they throw me on the line, line three. It's supposed to be, you know, the slow line, all of this and that, you know. So anyway, I get on the line. So we're making these products, which will blow your mind what I'm making. So anyway... How God does stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I'm just, yesterday, like I said, I'm going to go back and forth. Because yesterday, I ain't lying. I feel like I was going crazy. I'm like, I'm saying stuff. People ain't listening to me. Black people don't care nothing about themselves. Why should I keep opening my mouth saying something? They don't care nothing about me. They don't care nothing about themselves. They want to run around here and steal and take from people that's struggling to get what they have rather than take from somebody that I already got. You take it from people that's struggling to get something. You take it to turn down your own people because you don't care. And then if somebody try to tell you to care about yourself, you still don't care. You're not listening until it's too late. And then you run around with you like a chicken with the head cut off. Oh, darn, what happened? Why didn't somebody say something? Well, I'm saying something. Here's another scenario. <laughs> so uh, we could call it some racism uh, <laughs> 202. So anyway, getting back to the point. So I'm working the job, right? Which, let me take it back. Take it for people that don't have. But I'm like, stop turning down your own people. Because I know it come out like I'll go steal from somebody rich or steal from somebody that got more than you. Please, that's really what you're doing anyway, for real. Uh, thief, thief, whatever. So just, anyway, here's what I'm saying. It's early in the morning, I got to get ready to get out here. Okay. So I'm working the job that got me on the line. Like I said, I only, haven't had no training. Just showed me some stuff and that's it. So I'm not going to really get into what I'm doing yet. So anyway, I'm on the line. Anybody that worked in a warehouse know about assembly line. And you know about when they have one, two, three line. One of them lines is a fast line. The other one's slow. And then they got a slower one. Okay, because you got to put production out. So many you got to put out a day. So anyway, I'm on the third line, which, like I said, she took me over there, which it was rolling slow with, until I got there. You feel me? So I'm working with Cuban and Mexican. A couple of black people on the line, some females. Out of my class, let me back up again, too. 
I'm with six men. The other lady left. So I was in the class with 10 men and we was two women. Let me uh, preface everything with that. Uh, so I'm the only woman and the other guys. So anyway, they split us up. So they put me out of the assembly line. Uh, it's some uh, Cuban and Mexicans working the line. Uh, there's two black chicks that's in my area that work. They, it's uh, three on one side of the line and then it was two on this side. Okay, when I got there, first of all, I'm watching. They, they said, stay back and watch, you know, before you jump in. So I'm standing back and I'm watching. The uh, little white dude, he comes over, you know, he's trying to talk black, but he's cool. He's trying to talk to me and, and tell me, you know, take it easy. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Take your time. And he's telling me what to do, you know, the basics. He's cool. So I'm watching. All along they talking, they trying to tell the Cuban dude to move, but he don't want to move. He don't want to leave his position. He want to stay right there. Hello. So evidently, through some translation, they end up telling him he got to move. So he moves. I get in position. I'm starting. I got to flip this big old thing over and then stand it up, then staple some stuff onto it. Four staples in it, sometimes five staples, and put a piece of paper in that. Okay. You got to keep doing it. Some small, some big, large one. I'm talking about you got a thing, you got to flip it over. You got to do this for the eight to nine hours. Okay. Supposedly. <laughs> so anyway, I'm flipping, right? So it's slow. It was slow with, when the Cuban dude was working it, it was slow. When I got on it, it was slow. All of a sudden, they think I don't speak English, but they fail to realize about God, how good God is, because he gave me the spirit of discernment, because I worked with them before. So what they do is, you peep this. What they did was, the line was slow, so what they did, they seen that I was picking up. I could comprehend it. So what they did was they went and got another guy that had already been there that's supposed to be the fast guy. They threw him out of the line. He starts speeding up and start throwing the stuff out real fast to call himself to slow me down. But I've been working in a warehouse all my life. So what I did was I started flipping the stuff up and saving it. Your girl already had said they're supposed to stop. I said, oh, that's all right. Okay. So what? I just lined stuff up, put my paper in and kept it moving. So then they stood there looking. So then they got the job. So the chick that leaves the line, follow me. If you know anything about, anything about a warehouse, if you move the product down the line too fast, which we had already learned in class, which is a fact, if you move too fast, you're going to back up the line at the end and the people can't get it onto the, uh, the, uh, onto the trucks. Because that's where it ends up. Everything goes onto the truck. So, mm, hello, follow me. So he stood there and backed it up. So she comes down from the end. She's cussing and she's moving her head and stuff. She's cussing in Spanish. But the black chick's trying to talk to me. I'm like, nah, I hear you, but I want to hear what she's saying. She looking at me like, you said, nah, I don't speak Spanish, but I understand. I can comprehend. I know what she's saying. She was telling him to stop doing what he was doing, backing up the land because it was hurting her down on the end. But he was trying to do it so they could try to discourage me, a black woman, from being on the land. Black woman, black person from being on the land. Yeah, that's why I'm telling y'all why y'all sitting down sleeping and got your heads down in the sand. I was going to tell you where your head is for real. It's up your tail because you don't listen. That's why we as a people fail. And then you turn around talking about why they cutting these benefits. Why we don't have insurance. Why it's like it. Why they always picking out on the poor people. Because you don't listen. You blindsided. You defocused. That's what Pastor Wim was talking about. Being defocused. Keep focused. Keep your eye on the prize. Now keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on your people. Put your people up. What they're doing. They're putting their people in the company. They think they're going to chase me out right now. I got to get my paper. Feel that. I ain't worrying about them because you can't outwork me. But I ain't trying to work that hard for real. I ain't trying to work that hard for real. <laughs> they made that up for that little penny right there. You know, because I want a future. I want to be able to walk and, and, and walk straight back in life. But now, but like I said, they get together. They work together. They think because they speak in Spanish, somebody's stupid. But here's a hit. If you come to America, you got to speak English. And they can speak English. They know when you say paycheck. That's how I got them. I said, yeah, I, I speak no English. I said, paycheck, when do we get paid? When I first started working with them about seven, eight years ago. Oh, money? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I work with Chinese, Mexicans, Africans. I work with everybody. I don't care what language you speak. I can understand you. 
and I knew where she was standing, and this is what happened. He backed the line up. I still hung in there. Feel that. They came over, gave me compliments. Look, QC, he's a Mexican. Uh, he's a Cuban. He came over. He complimented me. Yeah. Okay. So you looking real silly. So you backed up the line. And I still kept up. So then he's standing there red face because your girl got in his butt for backing up the line. So your girl said, I think he's talking about shutting the line down. I've never heard that before. God. That was God, baby. That was Jesus. When you're nasty to his children, he don't like you, and he ain't going to play with you. He shut the line down, so we had to leave at 3.30 rather than your 4.15, so it cut your pay short. So then he was standing there looking stupid. I know that stupid look. I don't care if you're African, Puerto Rican, Asian, or you're alien. I understood that look. Boo! You got bumped in your head for being nasty. That's what you get. Yeah, but that's what they want to do. You want to chase all the blacks out. So you can move all your people in. And black people don't see it. You got a couple of blacks there. But you got more Cubans and stuff there than you do black. Because they run around with their head and say, As long as I get my money, I don't care what nobody's doing. I ain't looking at nobody else. All I'm looking at is me. I'm down for me. I'm down for my paper. Long as my bills get paid, long as I get my little drink out, long as I get my little weed and get my little crack, I'm fine. I ain't worrying about the next nigga. Long as I get mad, I'm all about me. F for everybody here. Yeah, why you effing everybody here? They cutting your medical benefits, which I don't even have no medical benefits. But here's the hit. I'm talking to this black chick yesterday. We we chatting. Since the line is down, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Smack them in the face. While the line's down, me and her chatting. She's telling, I'm telling, I'm venting, telling her some of my situation. She's telling me about other jobs and stuff like this and that that's hiring. You know, and, she, and as I'm talking to her about my medical and what happened on the other job, woo, woo, woo. She's like, I've been through the same thing. I said, thank you, Jesus. Share what's going on with you. Don't hold all of that stuff in you. That's how people have mental breakdowns. That's how people turn around and start doing all this killing other people, innocent people, because they got issues. Open your mouth and tell somebody about what's going on. It takes, it lessens what's going on in you. You're spreading it out. God says, share one another's burdens. Be Christ-like. That's what he's telling you. Tell somebody what's going on with you so somebody can help you, so somebody can identify with what's going on with you. So anyway, she said, yeah. She said, I didn't have no medical benefits, and they charged me $600 last year. I said, what? Are y'all hearing me? Why are you sitting there playing and talking about you about you? You bad about it, about it. You about yourself, and you don't care about the next black person. If you don't have insurance nowadays, they hitting you for six hundred dollars, or whatever. But if I don't have no job, making a certain amount of money, I can't pay benefits. If I don't work a certain job and it don't offer benefits, how am I gonna pay the medical? Oh, I gotta take it out of my pocket. But then if I'm not working and I'm sickly, I can't get no medical assistance. And if I owe a doctor bill, I can't go to the doctor because I owe you. We know what hospitals, I'm not going to call them out because they've been good to me. But uh, I got a lot of bills from them, which sometimes you pay the bill and then they turn around and send you the bill again and tell you you didn't pay it, playing them games, billing. Anyway. You owe them. They ain't trying to see you. Y'all better wake up. So then you sitting around and you sickly. You need to go to the doctor. I need to go to the doctor. I had doctor's appointments. I probably needed surgery, which I do. I need surgery. I'm going to throw it out there while y'all sitting there shucking and jabbing and thinking life is a game. And you they taking everything from them. They ain't giving poor people nothing. They trying to take everything. Y'all better pick up the papers and sign up for some programs, some real news. Where they talking about Trump accidentally forgot to sign for the little kid's medical card thing. He forgot the K-Chip program. He accidentally forgot. Y'all sitting there killing each other and running around protesting the police. And they easing in, busting you upside your damn head. Man, y'all better wake up. This ain't no game out here. This is the real world. Like dude said, this ain't no damn checkers. This is, uh, man, I almost said the whole world. This is chess. This is methodical. Man, you got to get out here and start using your brain and think. People undercutting us. We sitting here smiling. I ain't. Y'all sitting there smiling. Because believe me, 
I really was seeing like uh, Langston Hughes, a couple of more poets, a couple of more artists. I can't think of your girl that was dancing. Uh, 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 Kit, Eartha Kit, Eartha Kit, Langston Hughes. What did they do when they kept being oppressed in America? Hello, what did they do? Know your history, know your history. Black people that had something that was very talented. Not just basketball players and football players. We're talking about other people that have talents. They took and went to Europe. They went to different countries, Africa, different places. Uh, Tupac's mama, what did she do when she was oppressed her? Plus, she was getting chased. What? They went to other countries for relief so they could live, so they could breathe. I'm not really trying to run from a situation because it's not good to travel right now. <laughs> Real talk. Read the paper. Read the NAACP papers and stuff like that. Yeah. Woo, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Like I said, I was ready to give up. But I was like, man, I'm done. I'm done. Every time I look around, I'm getting a ticket. I'm getting this. Then I turn around and lose that job. Then I'm on this job. Then they trying to uh, uh, smash me. I'm like, what, Lord? You know, what did I do? What did I do wrong? What is this for? Can I ever have some happiness? Can I ever have some peace? Then I'm dealing with this neighbor next door, as you know. Supposed to be going to court. Who I get a letter from? Judge Mathis again. I ain't even open the letter. I ain't even open it. Because last time I lost my 30 something dollars when I was taking the chick to court. Plus I lost my car. Plus I lost the $60 I put in the car. What was that about? Yeah, I'm sad. And I, I don't even have no tears no more, man. I don't have no tears no more. Because if God be for you, who could be against you? You know? I was listening to T.D. Jakes and uh, I forget how it went. But basically, he was talking about when you pressed on each side. You know, when everything's coming against you. You know? And, you know, it's, it, it's either you making a stand or you running. You know? And, uh... Like I said, I was ready to run, and I don't know where the strength, I know it comes from God. Because like I said, if you just would have heard me yesterday, you know, I go and look at my bank account. I'm supposed to get my last check. I turn around. They, I made a hundred and something hours. This is, what, this is another lesson about money, why you run around chasing them $14 an hour jobs. I made a hundred and some, I did a hundred and something hours because I did two days overtime, 20 hours overtime. I was making $14.50 an hour. How much should my check be? A thousand or something, right? Right? Hello. Let's go six. <laughs> Let's go six, boo boo. Because the more you make, the more they take out for taxes. Your federal state taxes. Then they still took out for my medical and for my dental, boo boo. But you denied it and cut it off the 30th of last month. But you still went in and took that out. Come on now. Let's check the accounting department. I shouldn't have been behind. If anything, I was up because you went in, when you first started me, you said you had to go back and pick up from the previous month. So I should be current. So therefore, you should reimburse me my money. But I got to get with that. But I couldn't get to that. This had to devil with it. I was, this is how much... Man, I'm telling y'all I'm ready to cuss. How much stuff I'm going through. But I'm still standing. Only by God's grace and his mercy. Because like I said, I don't even know what these attacks are for. I've been attacked for the last four years since I've been in. Let me take it back because I was up. He did bless me. I had them little cars and I got lost, lost my mind. <laughs> I lost my mind. Got carried away with the car. Messing with Amazon and order and stuff. But it was stuff I needed for the house for real. I didn't go crazy like going on a shopping spree. I started doing stuff and had to take care of the house. So I did. I got to be focused. But anyway, that's how I got in debt, you know. But since then, man, I, I haven't been able to stand. I, I haven't. Every time when I start seeing light, he hits me. But I don't know. It's just something in me. You know, something in me just keeps on saying, go on, keeps on fighting. I've seen too many of my black ancestors beat, hung. 
Yeah, I seen them, huh? Mm, yeah, I seen them, huh? That dude is st I stopped being friends with. Let me start keep getting my clothes on. The dude I stopped being uh, friends with when we was cool. Uh, he took me to the movies to see uh, Birth of a Nation. I wanted to cuss him out. I don't like looking at pictures like that. Because I thought we was one. I thought all of us, you know, everybody got along. Until I saw that and had, had a birth of remembrance when it first came out. So the point I'm making, if you see, God has hands started. He started showing me racism slowly. But you know I'm slow. So I didn't I didn't get it. Because like I said, I'm around some, a lot of good white people. And so that's not real racist. You know, not racist. As a matter of fact, it's a guy in my class. He's cool. You know what I'm saying? Two white guys in the class is cool. That was in the class. So, like I said, it's a lot of good people. Everybody's not racist and prejudiced. So don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to come at you like that. I'm not coming at anybody like that. Just like all black people are not crackheads and bad. And all black people are not on welfare. And all people that live in the projects are not bad and killers and murders and stuff. And smoke dope and on welfare. So, now nah, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is... We, us, as a black people, we need to open our eyes and start seeing, man, because it's not just the white people that, that hate us. It's coming against us. We got a lot of other nationalities, man. They trying, but they trying to get rid of us. They trying to eliminate us. And I can't keep fighting by myself. I, uh, that's when it, get, it ends up turning to one. Because y'all don't live here with me. And that's what I got to think about, too. I got, I'm trying to figure out how I got to pay these bills. You know, I ain't got time to keep playing games with these jobs. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't have time for that. You know, I'm fighting the battle. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help. And, and I, I want to hit the adults, but at the same time, when I say hit the adults, I want to direct my, my thinking and my talking to the adults because I want you to wake up, but some of you are stuck. Some of you don't want to change. You happy where you are. You happy with your head in the sand. You happy with your head up your ass. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. Like I said, I see it. Shucking and jabbing. Thinking everything's a damn joke. Worry about your damn self. Until they fire you, then you turn around talking about, oh, well, my head is still in the sand. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I see it. Why didn't you look out for a nigga? Yeah. Remember, I couldn't look out for you because you were telling me you was looking out for yourself. You was badly, badly, about yourself. Until the avalanche falls on your head. Then you want somebody to speak for you. Man, that's basically what the lady was talking about in class. If you see paper on the floor, they didn't understand some of them. It was a psychological thing of what she was trying to teach. Is if you see paper on the floor, would you pick it up? If you see some of your friend or somebody in danger, would you help them? Is what she was using the paper as a metaphor for. Hello, hello, hello. I almost said another cuss word, Lord Jesus. But anyway, like I said, we better wake up. 